There you go. And joining me now, one of the journalists who had his account abruptly banned and then reinstated, uh, Stephen Herman is a chief national correspondent for Voice of America. Also with us, Mike Isaac, technology correspondent for The New York Times. Uh, Stephen, uh, let me start with you. Thanks for uh, being with us here in the studio. Uh, you quickly learned uh, that there were conditions to this reinstatement. Uh, tell us what's going on, uh, whether you plan to comply with these conditions uh, to get back on Twitter. Yes, Jim. Uh, when I got up this morning, I saw a bunch of news stories that my account had been reinstated with uh, those of the others. Well, that's not exactly true, as you pointed out. Yeah. I went to my account, and it said if I wanted to uh, be reinstated, I had to delete three tweets, and I could appeal if I didn't want to delete the tweets. So I appealed, and then all of my timeline disappeared. Until then, I could still see my old tweets, and I could also see other people's tweets. So now, while I'm in appeal, a deeper level of purgatory, apparently, uh, I'm totally locked out of my account. So you're in Twitter limbo right now. You, yes. You can't use the platform. Absolutely. Because you're, you're not complying with uh, Elon Musk's demands that you delete these tweets that he, I guess he doesn't like. That's uh, exactly right. Yeah. Uh, the tweets all refer to the Elon Jet account. And I had talked about how Elon Jet was still on Mastodon, another social media platform, and Facebook. And so those were apparently the offending tweets. Okay. And, and Mike, uh, Elon Musk initially mocked his critics over this ban tweeting. So inspiring to see this newfound love of freedom of speech by the press. I mean, I, I should know, full disclosure, I had my press credentials revoked. Uh, during the Trump administration, got them back uh, after we went to a federal judge, uh, going through that experience. So, you know, I, I wonder, do you think the public understands the gravity of the situation when the very powerful are able to silence uh, people tasked with holding them accountable? I mean, you were, you guys were literally trying to hold uh, Elon Musk's feet to the fire, and it sounds like he had had enough and he lashed out. Sounds familiar. No. You're totally, you're totally right. I remember when you when you got kicked out of the the press pool um, a few years back. And no, it's 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 you know my colleague Ryan Mack uh, was suspended, as you guys noted before. Uh, we have been aggressively reporting on Elon. I think the thing that really is is hypocritical in a lot of this is just he he claims to be a free speech sort of warrior, free speech maximalist uh, when it suits him. And then when, you know, I think he really made a very emotional decision when he had um, what he said was a stalker following one of his children in another car. And, and look, like, obviously that's a terrible thing. No one wants that to happen. But he's also been fixated on Elon Jet, this account, for a very long time, tried to pay the guy to take it down. And so there's something, like, really personal on how he's been dealing with it. And I think that's that can be really dangerous when personal sort of feelings begin to interpret policy and really rewrite policy at Twitter in a matter of an afternoon for Elon. Yeah. And Stephen, I think uh, Elon Musk was also making a pretty incendiary accusation. I mean, if you're a reporter covering a politician or a sporting event uh, and you tweet that a senator has just arrived on the floor, or that a player has arrived at the stadium, uh, I suppose you're talking about their real time location. But if you're talking about Elon Musk's jet, I mean, how in the world are you supposed to be providing precise coordinates at any given moment? And, you know, I mean, if you were to extrapolate this out it's and engage in this fantasy, yeah. Jim, I mean, is the, is, does he think the U.S. Air Force is coming out? I mean, what? Well, it's you, just so strange. You and I at the White House for four years tweeted where Air Force One was and the president of the That's United right. States, uh, who yeah. is obviously uh, somebody that other people would like to harm around the world. So it's, it's, it's utterly ridiculous. It but, I, but I wonder if um, you take some serious exception to this and that he would make that kind of a, a, a charge, assassination coordinates. I mean, that is, a, that is a dangerously loaded term, if I may say. Well, we're trying this now, obviously, in the court of public opinion. Yeah. And he did make a move to uh, conditionally allow uh, the suspended journalists, including myself, back on Twitter if we agree to his terms. But what is it going to be next week? Yeah. That's the question. Is the, the rules are moving hour by hour, and it's, it appears to be Elon Musk who's making the rules. Right, as we go along, on, by the seat of his pants. And, and Mike, before all this happened, there were other unflattering headlines about Elon Musk not paying rent at Twitter since the takeover, threatening to end yeah. severance for laid off workers. Uh, what else is going on over there? I mean, it's just, it is, you know, it's sort of like that, uh, 
you know, that uh, meme of the bird or the dog or whatever in, in hell saying this is fine <laughs> and everything's on fire. And, and I, of course, since then, they've replaced it with the Twitter bird, but um, it's not fine. <laughs> No, that's right. I keep thinking of this sideshow Bob Simpsons thing where he keeps stepping on rakes, if you remember that. But um, yes. it, it really is like a comedy of errors over there. I think the problem, the biggest problem is Elon wants to drum up activity on the site. You know, um, Twitter is very influential. People like us, you know, are on it all the time. Big news headlines sort of go from it. But at the same time, it's a micro sort of niche network compared to, say, Facebook or uh, other social platforms. And so my suspicion, and some reporting has borne this out, is that he's basically trying to increase engagement on the site with a lot of the recent stuff, including the, the Twitter file stuff that he's been disclosing and, and get more activity on the site, trying to get Trump back. Um, but it, it, at the same time, advertisers are basically recoiling from how uh, a lot more toxic content feels like it's it's sort of floating up, including from Elon's uh, own account, you know, sort of going after uh, his own employees. So I think he really has a revenue problem that he's trying to deal with. And as we've seen in recent headlines, is, is starting to try to raise more money from investors to deal with all the money going out the door. Yeah, and Stephen, I mean, one of the things that uh, this, I mean, this whole episode with Elon Musk taking over Twitter and, and your suspension, suspension of other journalists, what it's highlighted is that there are these other social media platforms out there where folks can engage in the same kind of civil a discourse, perhaps an elevated civil discourse, um, places like Post and, and Mastodon, and also, and I know you're there, I've, I've signed up for it in recent days, uh, because it just seems like we might need an alternative here pretty soon if this keeps going the way it's going right now. Well, uh, when I was suspended, I had 3,000 followers on Mastodon. As of right now, looking at my phone, I have 29,000. So it is boosting, uh, uh, apparently, a bit of an exodus uh, from Twitter. Yeah, and and these platforms, uh, Mike, are pretty user friendly. Yeah, I mean, look, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of folks in the startup community who sense opportunity, who know that uh, you know platforms like let's say Truth Social or Parler or whatever that claim to be like free speech maximalism. Uh, also turn off a lot of folks who don't want to basically get in political fights all the time, you know? And I think that's why folks are leaving uh, Twitter because it's been highly partisanized, highly politicized. And I do think that uh, folks are starting to figure out what, what is post-Twitter, what is next? And it might, might be sites like, um, like Post or, or Mastodon. All right. Uh, well, Steve Herman, Mike Isaac, thanks very much. Steve, I just want to also uh, show a little solidarity with you. Uh, it it you. is wrong to ban journalists. Uh, banning journalists backfires. And I think Elon Musk is learning that right now because we care about what folks like you do uh, for a living. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.